All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to hop into the first impressions and a little bit of review of the game called Tales of Arise. Now, this is a action RPG brought to you by Bandai Namco, and it was recommended to me by Steam because I played Bless Unleashed and Swords of Legends Online. So there's some really cool things I really like, and maybe we should just hop in and let me show you some of the gameplay. All right, so right from the start, you're kind of in the world. It teaches you quickly how to navigate and use a few of the, the keys that this game is played on. This game works on controller. You can play it just on your keyboard, but I chose to use my keyboard and my mouse. So in the demo, it puts you quickly into what you would call your combat tutorial, showing you some of the important things on the UI to let you know like what should you be looking for and what these things kind of mean. I appreciate that because I'd never played a game that kind of felt this way. Uh, I like this game, I'm not going to lie. Very interesting how it rolls, but let me just show you some of the combat to give you an idea of how it feels. So first off, I'd like to call out that it's kind of like an open world combat feel. So you normally jump into these enemies like you're playing a Pokemon game and it pulls you into an instance where your battle begins. And then you kind of just start clicking away or tapping your buttons away. You have abilities in midair you have abilities while you're on the ground so you can kind of change those abilities how you see fit um, but what I have here is a party of, of allies as well I don't get to control the allies per se but they will fight for me and on the left hand side of the screen as you can see I have boost strikes so when an enemy's health is fairly low and we can one shot them I'm able to activate this team style boost attack that brings in two players or characters together and does a whopping amount of damage. Now back to it, I'm able to navigate the battlefield left and right, go and uh, use my abilities how I want to to attack enemies. The game is very fluid and combat is actually very fun. The only thing that I didn't really like about it was that while you're in combat all the characters are making these weird noises and they're talking all of the time. Now, I didn't show this at the very beginning of the game, but you actually get to choose between five different characters. Since I've always loved the Monk and hand-to-hand -hand combat style fighters, I chose Law, um, and it tells you what his abilities are, so each character has like a special perk or ability that allows him to play a little bit different. Now, as you can see, the world exploration in the game was really cool. It looks clean to me. Now... In the demo when I first booted it up, it mentioned that this game was in like under review, like it wasn't completed, so it may look completely different if you purchase the full $60 version of the game. But either way, it still looked good to me. You were able to look around and find these these uh, I don't know materials on the ground, and it gave you a quick idea of what those materials could be used for and where to actually use those materials. And here we are. Another combat scene has came in and immediately you get to run around and fight. Cast your abilities for your other players using the 1, 2, 3, 4 or the D-pad. At this point I'm trying the controller so it was, it, was, it, was, it was natural like it still felt okay. But I didn't prefer it as much as I preferred using the keyboard and mouse. But I love the special effects and style of combat in this game. It looks amazing in my opinion. There's something going on all the time. The bright colors, the abilities casting by your team automatically, and just the, the cool look of things. I just really enjoyed it. It kind of kept me excited about it. Now, the UI and the settings menu, one thing I wasn't really stoked about was you didn't really have a lot of stuff you could equip. It was armor, gauntlets, and an accessory. That's it. I don't know. I felt like there could have been more. So as I continued my journey, just looking around, seeing what that was, I thought I thought it was something that I could gather from, but it actually was a big old rock enemy that we had to fight. He was pretty tough, and uh, he knocks you around pretty good. Um, these guys can deal quite a bit of damage. One thing that I didn't know right up front was that during combat, you can actually go into your menu and pause combat, allowing you to use any special healing any uh, like ability boosters and things like that right there in the middle of combat so if your characters are about to die you can actually save them just by using the action menu where the game will pause and you have time to choose who to heal what to heal with and things of that nature but just look at this in my opinion the combat is really cool it brings something to the table that kind of reminds me of the old days of final fantasy 
but gives me the open world combat feel I've always appreciated as well. I like not button mashing, but being able to string combos together to deal really cool damage to these to these PvE enemies. While running around, I found that there were merchants in the wild as well, so you could roll up to these little shopkeepers and you could purchase other healing things from them, you could sell things to them, or you could ask them more questions about what they offer and what their purpose is. But as you can see, there's all kinds of things that you can buy. So the tomatoes and potatoes are something you can cook near campfires so that your team can get a, an, a total boost. And again, another cool aspect is those, those characters sometimes are their favorite dish gives them a bigger boost. Or a dish that that character cooks lasts longer or has a better effect for a shorter duration. It, it was really, really cool to see all these little things, right? Um, and right now what I'm doing is using some of those things I found around on the ground, those materials to craft accessories. And then I can turn around and use those accessories on my characters. In this demo, I could find them by myself, but at the time I didn't really understand how to equip them. So it does it a little bit different. But it still makes perfect sense. So you have to actually go through the equipment, then choose the accessory slot, and then choose what accessory you would like for each character. Um, I did this on a few different characters just to toss things on and see what the difference would be Now what I'm about to show you is the thing that kicked my butt the first time I fought it So while exploring around I come across this big old giant Zoogle, Zoogle? I don't know how to say the words But I came across this huge looking beast and the game warned you hey these guys are really hard But hey, I'm a I'm a pretty I'm a pretty bossy guy So I jump in here to fight this huge beast and let me tell you guys the combat probably lasted around seven to eight minutes of me trying to deal as much damage as I possibly could but I won't lie I didn't know that I could go into my settings in mid mid combat and use heal abilities so I was kind of not doing things right um, I didn't know I could heal it let me know that there are weak points on these enemies um, I didn't realize my character also had an ability that would heal himself as well uh, to keep him alive there's so many different little aspects of this game. Um, the, the, the demo may not have really given you all the details of it, uh, but it was a clear indication of what combat could feel like in this game, what the world would look like in this game, and what the enemies were capable of in this game. And that's why I would honestly give this game a, a solid shot. Uh, currently it's like 60 bucks though. It's uh, $60 on Steam right now. If I could get it at a discounted price, I would probably most definitely play this game I just don't want to drop 60 on it right now however watching this battle and how long it took to get you know the, my my four my party of four on the battlefield out there and dealing damage and casting special abilities it's just super cool the game was just awesome this this really really turned me on to the game um, there's so much more to learn as you can see that there is on the left hand side you've got the four classes that I have out on the field now but a subset of two that I could cycle in at any time and allow them to join the combat as well by cycling out another character. Super cool game. Super cool. Now, here's where I want to call out. Uh, my entire team was dead, and uh, like I say, I didn't realize at the time that I could just press the escape button, turn around and get the revives and the heals on to keep my team alive. So we end up losing this fight. Probably more because of my lack of knowledge on the subject, so I didn't know that that was a feature, and we got annihilated. So we spawned back in, and that was my first loss. <laughs> so, just to give you guys some backstory, the whole purpose of us coming here was to try to go to this huge city that we've got that I'm running up to. Um, I've seen some really funny looking creatures chilling around i don't know bunny pigs uh, in, in, all right um so you know we're, we're running we're trying to get into this huge castle the first city of the game and then we're alerted that hey there's one of those big old baddies that you need to destroy before you can actually go into our city um so of course i immediately thought oh i gotta go fight that big old warthog pig looking thingy with the horns again and probably die two or three more times but what was cool about this one is it didn't pick that one. It, it gave me something else, something a little more sinister, in my opinion. So the, the game does have an in-game map, and uh, you're easily able to use this to figure out where you're supposed to go, right? So you can click it and kind of see what the next area is going to look like, uh, give you an idea of where you're going. Um, I felt that that was really cool. 
But of course, before I went and fought this next boss, I wanted to kind of look over my character's arts and understand a little bit more about what they do. So your main character, you have the ability to change three of his skills, whether it's in the air or on the ground. We kind of discussed that earlier. Um, when you're using the NPCs, you're actually able to choose uh, like what they can use what you want them to cast and kind of how you'd like their combat to be so like if you chose the healer and you didn't want your healer to do anything but heal you're able to choose those options for the healer all right so back to what law is capable of doing giving you guys an idea of the ability list now what i see is the ability to change them out and level them up as well so if you notice the word count below whenever i'm scrolling up and then the amount of stars I think you can increase the power of those where this demo isn't complete um, I didn't get to really play around with this stuff too much but it was honestly really cool to see all the different styles that you could put out and the different abilities that were available for um, law himself so my team was still wiped out so I thought I was very confident that if I came to a little campfire and rest I would actually be able to heal everybody up um, but something cool happened in the process so you had the ability to just have time to reminisce and talk about past life and tell stories around the campfire or you could turn around and cook a meal with your people and eat with them and this is where I've seen like because it's their favorite meal um, they actually had these bonuses that would be applied to the meal so I had Four different meals to choose from. Uh, I think we went with the, what was it? The ice cream, maybe? I can't remember. Um, but we sat there. I looked over it, and I wanted to read a little bit about what would happen. So we knew that the cooking would have the effect of some type of boost of defense or attack. Um, and based on the things that I had, I had to also choose who was going to cook it. And if that person cooked it, what would be the bonus? So as you can see, r using Renwell to cook the food meant that it was going to have a, a lower effect, but it was going to last a longer amount of time. And then you get a cool little cutscene about it as well. <laughs> I, I don't know. They just I found this really cool because it's something that you do in between combat, in between exploration. Um, so after we did that, you know, we're clean, we're good to go. We need to go find this other boss. And it takes us to a new area of the map with a few different enemies types that are here. Now, immediately I can tell that this Praya Mantis, Scorpion, Caterpillar, Worm... Thing, right? Oh, I don't know. This thing is over there in the corner. So, I, you know, of course approach it. And like I say, this is kind of what made the game super cool was that I could see this creepy looking boss daddy over here standing in the corner. But what made it so awesome is just the way the combat... I knew what combat was coming. But of course, it was a new enemy. So it's time to get a different idea of its combat style and how it fights. Which is pretty crazy. So that was me testing to make sure that I could actually open the menu while in-game. And I had to do it quite a few times in order to completely defeat this enemy. Now, skipping forward a little bit in the in the battle, as you can see, like, the combat effects, the colorful styles, the way the battlefield is built, you have this basic arena style fight, um, it just, it became really cool, and at no point was it redundant. So, even though I may have been trying the same abilities out, and had the same, like, team, it all looked different from different angles. Being able to look at the different style and seeing things like where the ground catches fire and because it's on fire, like it's, it let you know that that guy just cast a powerful fire ability. Now, another cool thing is your mage actually also has the ability to res you if you were downed in combat as well. So that's again how you kind of kitted your character or your team to make sure that they support you in your playstyle properly. I give this game a lot of credit. I really do want to go back and play this game even more because of just the way it looks and the way the combat style is, and it's something new to learn. So you know you're gonna we would have to learn this combat style and how to be effective. 
and what gear is going to work best. And there, because there's elemental gear as well, and as you can see, some enemies have a different type of element based on what they are. Your characters deal holy damage, fire damage, earth damage, wind damage. It's it's just all these different elements that you can take advantage of and learning how to break your enemy so that you get free damage for a hot minute or hit your enemy's weak spots or deal critical damage to the enemy. I feel like this game has a lot to offer in the combat style and just the overall fun of things. So I mean I most definitely plan on purchasing this game whenever I get the opportunity to. Hopefully when it goes on sale, I will not be purchasing it anytime sooner probably unless something immaculately crazy happens. But it was just really awesome to watch the combat, see how the game played out, see how the team meshes together and can support each other. Oh, that was a dodge, by the way. That was a perfect dodge. When you do a perfect dodge, you take no damage from the enemy's attack and you glow white for a moment. It's just super cool mechanics in the game. I always say that we haven't seen anything new in a lot of the games that we play. It's not always the newness that makes it better. It's just how it does it and how it makes it feel when it happens. And this game did feel really good once I started to get an idea of dodging, attacking, combos, and using my team skills the right way. So overall, my very first impressions about this game is it is delightful. It is super cool to watch, to play, to learn, and I'm very curious as to what all the other classes have to offer. I seriously seriously can't wait to see what the full game is about it's been a long time since i've been able to take advantage of a nice single player combat based game that actually had me excited and wanted to play now this could be because it's a demo but the character conversation portion of the cutscenes didn't really give me that cool factor where they were talking they would say short things and i kind of feel like because i chose the english version versus the japanese version that has a lot to do with that. However, never mind. The combat, the look, and the feel of the game are superb, and I highly recommend giving this demo a shot and seeing if you would like to purchase the full game too. But that's all we have for the review today. The game is a lot of fun, and I love it. But I'll see you guys next time.